I received a call from a detective from New York, and he asked me if I heard that Ben Novak had died. And I said, no, I, I had, how did he die? And he said, well, he was murdered. Do you have any suspects? And my immediate response was, you better check the wife. Ben was home, in bed, sleeping. And out of the blue, he was assaulted in his own home. Ben keeps a gun on the side of his bed, but they're on him and tying him up before he can even react. At first, he calls out for help for his wife. I received a phone call about 2 o'clock in the morning from Ben that he had just gotten untied uh, from being tied up for 25 hours, and that he believed that Narcy had been involved in this home invasion robbery. And I said, well, what makes you think that? And he said, because when he broke into the room, she said, look out, I, he has a gun on his nightstand. Even though he was tied up and his eyes were bound, he could hear Narcy in the background directing these two men where to go for the money that was kept in the house and where the valuables were and what to take. They had a very volatile relationship. Ben had been cheating on Narcy for years, and Narcy could get violent. Benji was very concerned about his reputation. He believed that if he was put into a bad light, his company was put into a bad light and vice versa. So we were trying to mitigate the severity of this before it escalated to a police matter. I reached out to Pat Franklin, a uh, private investigator, and told him to get in touch with Benji. When I arrived at Ben's house, I found the front door was ajar and the house was quiet. And I called out for Ben a few times and then he came down the stairs. I could see that his face was pretty red and he had a pretty deep gash on the side of his nose as if uh, his face was slapped and the glasses had cut his nose in there. He also had ligature marks on his ankles and wrists. He said that they took $300,000 in a safe and other things, and that he wanted me to find Narcy, find the property, and that he wanted his money back. I'd like my father's jewelry back. I'd like my jewelry back that has my name engraved on my watches and things. I don't understand why you're talking yeah, about Yeah, right. Why did you have to do all this, Narcy? I don't know why. Why did you have to start all of this in motion? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I know the things that you do to me. Why have people do what they did to me? Why not just I just bound and gag me, handcuff me for two days? Why? We did it that one when we were having sex. You did it to me. Oh, stop it. Do. Don't give me that bullshit. We have done it for two We days. haven't done anything like that ever. What With a gun God? at my head, Narcy? What gun? With three guys with latex gloves all over this house? Oh, my God. I called Narcy, and she said, how do I know I can trust you, et cetera. And I said, Narcy, look, it's probably better to deal with me than deal with the police. When we met at the coffee shop, she was complaining to me about how Ben treats her, that she's disgusted by him, and that I don't know what kind of man he really is. She was rather explicit about the sexual proclivities uh, that Ben enjoyed and had her participate in. He would make her have sex with other men while he watched, have sex with women, and he would pay them to have sex with her. She was also very frustrated and kept talking about the prenuptial. 